thank you very much, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. I very much welcome this opportunity to meet and discuss in an EU-US setting, and I thank the, <coughs> the Italian embassy, in particular, Ambassador Zoniero, for kind of hosting this event. This Italian environment is indeed fitting, as Italy has invested significant resources in Europe. For example, there is an institute in Palermo, which has established a public-private partnership with the health enterprise in Pittsburgh. Using eHealth solutions to pool resources and knowledge across the Atlantic, this partnership has made the Institute in Palermo one of the leading organ transplant centers in Europe. I believe that eHealth is an area where we, we can all benefit from mutual work and sharing of experience. That is why Secretary Sibelius and Vice President Kroos signed a Memorandum of Understanding on eHealth in December of 2010. I will come back to this later. This event comes at an opportune moment, both in Europe and in the US. The economic situation is challenging. Health budgets come under increasing pressure, whilst demands for healthcare continue to rise. Never before has there been such a pressing need to find smarter ways to deliver high quality healthcare to citizens. I am a firm believer in EHEAD. I take every opportunity to bank the EHEAD drum, given its clear potential to make a significant and lasting contribution towards the reform of health services to meet the challenges of the future. There is encouraging evidence that the e-health message is getting through. This spring, the EU health ministers discussed a number of initiatives that demonstrate that e-health is making a difference. <coughs> Furthermore, they illustrate that e-health approaches must demonstrate effectiveness, efficiency, and cost utility gains. For instance, at the Danish Hospital of Horses, a health technology assessment has been undertaken to analyze the effect of introducing an ICT system to ensure more efficient use of operating rooms. The results were positive. The use of operating rooms increased, operations were started on schedule more frequently, and cancellations were reduced. Additionally, clinicians were more satisfied as they experienced easier access to information necessary for their work. In the UK, the so-called whole systems demonstrator provided strong evidence in support of telehealth and telecare for the 6,000 patients sent. In the UK, the use of telehealth shows a reduction of mortality by 45%, a reduction of emergency admissions by 20%, and a reduction of bed stay days by 14%. The UK example underlines an important point patient at an important point. Patients should actively take part in his or her treatment. In this respect, providing access for citizens to their health data will be critical towards empowering people to make well-informed choices about their health and healthcare. This will have a profound effect on the culture and attitude of actors in the health sector and would serve to boost both quality of care and health outcomes. Developing patient empowerment is one way towards preparing health systems for the future, for an aging population, and for financial sustainability. We need to explore further means <coughs> to support patient empowerment. The examples I have mentioned use e-health solutions to enable patients to be more active players in managing their health. Our European Innovation Partnership on Active and Healthy Aging, the Digital Agenda for Europe, and the forthcoming e-health action plan, led by Vice President Kroos, will help us to make important steps forward. And today, in Europe, we have an additional instrument to help to achieve the overall objectives of better use of ICT for health. Only a few weeks ago, in Copenhagen, I have launched our new e-health network. This was set up under the directive of patients' rights in cross-border healthcare 
bring together decision makers from all EU member states. In Europe, each member state has its own healthcare system. Therefore, such a network is essential to ensure good cooperation and to help us to address the same challenges in a coordinated manner. Within the network, member states have agreed to cooperate in three priority areas. First, the network will identify the minimum set of patients' data to be exchanged cross-border to ensure safety and continuity of medical treatment and care at home and abroad. This is of tremendous importance in cases of emergency care and is also instrumental in facilitating planned care across borders. Issues such as semantics and technical interoperability will be addressed by the network. We hope to build on the work done by the project, project EPSOS, which I know is cooperating closely with the US administration on interoperability. Second, the network will work on common identification and authentication measures to ensure transferability of data in cross-border healthcare as a precondition for secure electronic health services. Third, the network will develop methods to enable the use of health data for public health and medical research. Let me mention another important health initiative which will start this summer and which is closely related to the network's functions and objectives. The joint action on patient registry comprising 19 member states, will analyze the methodology needed to build patient registries for cross-border use. Many researchers, industry actors, health professionals, and authorities face difficulties in securing evidence on a sufficiently large scale. Fragmentation of evidence limits the possibility of advancing public health policies and can also act as a break on research. If, however, Evidence is available from larger population sources. Decisions made on the quality, safety, and effectiveness of health systems will have a much more solid foundation. I am aware that in the US, we have developed common guidelines on the setup of patient registries, precisely to enable easier reuse and sharing of such registry data. I applaud this initiative, which I see as helpful, as a helpful source of inspiration for our work in the joint action. Let me turn to another widely debated issue in Europe, data protection. Ensuring the safety of personal data is vital, a key value in European society. However, the legislation protecting citizens in this field may at the same time limit our possibility to improve health. A few weeks ago, the eHealth Task Force, which consists of high-profile members <coughs> of records in innovation and health, released a report on how innovation can help to shape the future of health. Not surprisingly, the report identified the issue of handling health data safely and securely as a key prerequisite for the many opportunities innovation can bring to health and healthcare systems. The group noted that despite the numerous benefits of e-health for individual citizens and society, it remains an underdeveloped opportunity. In January of this year, the Commission published a new proposal for a regulation on data protection, which is now being discussed in the Council and the European Parliament. The new proposal aims to facilitate the second reuse of data at national level and across borders for the benefit of public health and research, whilst fully respecting the fundamental rights of citizens for data protection. Our objective is to strike the right balance between the need to respect privacy in the doctor's patient relationship with that of allowing the research community access to the wealth of data from electronic health records. I am aware that this is a key issue also on this side of the Atlantic. This brings me back to the 2010 memorandum of understanding between the US and the EU on the US. The memorandum points directly to a key element needed if e-health is to provide better integrated health services. And this is interoperability. Through this memorandum, the US and Europe are committed to working together to develop and increase the uptake of internationally recognized standards for electronic health records. Europe and the US have 
some of the most advanced R&D enterprises in the world on ICT in EHEAD for health. Using common interoperability standards would benefit not only health research, it would also serve as an incentive for these enterprises to develop new ICT tools which can become an integral part of the interaction between the patient and health services. After almost 20 years of research and the emergence of a significant number of innovative ICT health products and solutions on the market, now is the time to make the quantum leap from project-based cooperation to sustainable cooperation. Wishful thinking and long-term projection should be replaced by concrete outcomes, services, and benefits for patients, doctors, for healthcare systems, and society in general. For instance, cross-border use of electronic prescriptions will help to ensure safe treatments regardless of geographic location. This is why the Commission is working hard with EU member states towards adopting, by the end of this year, measures on the content of cross-border prescriptions. And whilst respecting that the finance Financing and organization of healthcare is the primary responsibility of member states. At European level, we also have an important contribution to make, for example, by exploring sustainable business models for health innovation. By the end of this year, the Commission will have adopted a new action plan for e health for 2012 2020. This will consist of measures designed to accelerate the delivery of e health will pave the way for innovative health services, encourage the sharing of best practices, and will include ways of measuring progress on e-health across the EU. When setting up structures like the EU e-health network or parallel US initiatives, I believe it is important that we keep each other informed of our strategic choices and possibly aim at enabling interoperability between the EU, US and EU as well. I welcome all contributions to the strategic thinking on EHA, either in Europe or elsewhere, and count on everybody's engagement and commitment towards making EHA a living reality, running at full potential to the benefit of all, Europe, the United States, and the rest of the world. Thank you very much.